Good morning! You have just tuned in to Light Talks. My name is Nakima Light, licensed clinical social worker, and I am super excited for today's talk because you're going to be getting to know me, getting to know all about me. No, maybe, maybe a little bit, but stay tuned because today I'm going to be doing Christian Girl Talk Q&A Life Talk Style. <laughs> So I'm super excited to be doing today's talk because I was tagged by my sister in Christ purpose living you got to go check out her channel because she also did a christian girl talk q a and it was super super fun so she encouraged me and tagged me to be able to in this video share on my faith journey and offer encouragement question number one is how long have you been saved so i gave my heart to the lord may 2011 and i remember that pretty vividly because i was just graduating from undergrad what i remember most in that season of my life is how one of my friends was planting seeds even before i realized for my life journey to christ and she came to visit me one time in college upstate and it was like the woman at the well type of experience. Like, these are the things that you're doing. They're not going to lead to a life of fulfillment. You have a void and essentially, you don't have to live this way. You can live in purity. And I remember when she was sh sharing these things with me, I was like, who have you been talking to? Clearly people are telling my business cause she don't even go to this college anymore. Um, but her words never left my mind. In a way, they caused torment and frustration because they never left my mind. And I continued in what I was doing at the time, but bit by bit, the Holy Spirit had been breaking my walls down. So by the time I graduated college um, that year, I was in search for God. I was in search for Jesus and that journey started and never turned back since so um, my faith journey started may 2011 number two number two number two <laughs> what is your favorite bible verse and why now for anybody that knows me you know i love reading the bible so this was hard to be able to narrow down but i picked two i picked two and I'll stick with those that I want to share my favorite Bible verses and why. So number one is Genesis 17 verse 2. And um, I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. So Genesis 17 and 2 reads, And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Now, this is one of my favorite verses because it is the Lord's covenant promise with his people, with Abraham at the time, and with me. When I personalize it with me, I will make my covenant blessing with you and I will prosper you. I will walk with you forever. And in times of challenge, that's a promise that I can hold on to. And also when I see the promises of God unfolding before me, then I can remember that he promised it, that it was already written. My second favorite verse is from Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Um, and I'm gonna read this one from the Amplified version because I love the detail of it. So, Bible number two. Um, <laughs> For the scripture says, whoever believes in him 
whoever adheres to and trusts in and relies on him will not be disappointed in his expectations. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, one of the battles emotionally um, throughout my journey has been the wound of rejection and disappointment. And when the Lord led me to his word in Romans chapter 10 and 11, where I saw his promise that those that rely on him, those that trust in him shall never be put to shame, shall never be disappointed, shall never be let down. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to test you on that. And when I began to rely on him more, I was able to see that he always came through for me. I can always trust in him. And I began to rely on people less. I began to rely on myself less. Question number three is, what is your favorite book um, besides the Bible? And also, this is very hard to answer because I love reading. So I picked a couple. Guys, bear with me. But I wanted to share them with you because they've really been foundational um, pillars in my faith journey as I was growing and getting more in tune with God. Book number one is The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Towser. Boom. Small book, but very powerful and impactful because it really unfolds the fact that we know little to nothing about God. And if we have in our imaginations, God all figured out, that's possibly not God, and that's possibly not the God that you should serve. The vastness of the Holy One, the vastness of His power and His sovereignty, it's really unimaginable in the human mind. And this book does a great job of being able to put ourselves in the right position and place to give God that type of reverence. So, really love this book. I'm not going to give a review on every book, but just wanted to share with you. Um, it's Happening by William McDowell. This is an amazing book that talks about um, creating revival in your space and in your heart and how to do that with the postures that you keep. Um, book number three, Spiritual Leadership. And this is by Oswell Sanders. Actually, love the fact that as I was doing a study um, a couple years back on servant leadership, um, this book is dense, I would say, in terms of its reading, but so powerful and being able to teach you how to live a life of leadership. And um, I know that that's what God has called me to in my faith journey, to be a leader and to be a servant of his people. So that can be challenging. And these give some foundational truths to help you with that. Book number four, Secrets of the Secret Place by Bob Sorge uh, or Sorge. I always say his last name wrong. But this book is an amazing space for devotional and prayer. So those are a couple of my favorite books. Um, I can literally do a whole video on books that I would recommend to grow your faith journey, whether it be in singleness, marriage, any area. So if you would be interested in that, comment down below. I got you. Number four is what is your favorite hymn? Now you see I got my hymn book over here. So I'm going to share it with you. I'm not going to sing. Well, I'll try not to sing, but I wanted to share with you my favorite hymn, um, which is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Now, there's a particular space in this hymn that just ministers to my heart that I wanted to share. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. I'm prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. <sighs> that hymn really ministers to me because so many times in our faith journey, we can beat up on ourselves for falling, for 
drawing away or walking astray from God. And this hymn speaks to the idea that our hearts are prone to wander, yet God is the one that's going to draw us back in every time when we're pursuing him with a grateful heart. So love, love, love that hymn. So question number five is what have you been learning in the word lately? I've been studying for the last couple months um, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, and journeying through each chapter and kind of writing my own commentary on what I've been getting. And I would say it's been a challenging book to read as the Lord has been showing me the themes that are so similar to the day and age that we live in right now, where he's continuously speaking to the people of God about, about their sin, about the fact that they've turned from him. He gives them warnings of judgment and he gives them promises of hope and restoration. So no matter what, so no matter the state in which they were in, whether they be in captivity or whether they be oppressed by the people of Babylon, for example, God was like, no, I'm coming to get you, you're mine, and continues to draw them out. And I believe that that's what the Lord's promise is for us today, right now in America in 2020, in this world. He's warning us. He's declaring that there will be judgment, but then he's also speaking hope in the midst of that. Question number six is, who were you before Christ and who are you now? Uh, before Christ, I declared that I was an atheist, actually, um, that I didn't believe God existed. And... That kind of goes back a far period of time, actually. I think it was around 12 or 13 years old that I declared God does not exist. And I believe after that declaration, my life that I lived was for myself. I relied on myself. I declared that people were unreliable or untrustworthy. Um, and therefore, God was. So he didn't exist. Um, in my youth, I had a lot of challenges and um, instability in my household where years later, I would say in my early 20s, I found like journals when I used to pray and those prayers didn't come to pass. So at a very early age, I was like, well, if I'm praying these prayers and none of them have been answered, clearly there is no God. And I just want to encourage someone that might be in that same space because I know now who I am now and the life that I live now and what I've experienced that God absolutely exists and his hand was woven all throughout my life even when he didn't answer or even when he didn't answer in the way that I wanted him to that did not negate his presence in my life. So that's who I was before Christ. Um, and who I am now, I believe that I'm confidently walking in the authority and purpose that God has given me. Um, a work in progress, definitely still under construction, but yet he's peeling back all these different areas in order for me to see him rightly and to see myself rightly. Therefore, I can see others rightly and love on them. But if you would love a testimony video, also comment down below. I can definitely do that one where it's a full uh, journey of my testimony to Christ. Because I love him. <laughs> Question number seven is what advice would I give someone that wants to grow in their faith? So I would definitely say reading God's word. Reading God's word daily consistently and in the beginning um or even in the middle i'm not sure where you are right now it might feel hard it might feel confusing um but stay in his word uh beginning to understand that the whole entire book is about jesus so being able to not stay stay stuck to the old testament or stuck to just reading the new testament but being able to understand from genesis to revelations is about christ so staying in his word not feeling like you need to be on a race to read the entire bible over and over but 
being in a place where you can go through his word at your pace and taking your time, right? On your faith journey, if you consider it like this, I will be reading this Bible for the rest of my life. What's the rush, right? So I would say staying in your word, prayer. Prayer is so important. And your prayer life should develop and grow as you're growing in your faith journey. But starting where you're at, right? Like it does not mean that I'm going to be praying for hours. Um, I'm actually not a person that does that. I more often than not am praying throughout the day. Like if you see me like looking off into space, I'm probably praying. If I'm writing in my journal, I'm probably praying, you know, so being in a place where you, the word of God literally gives us the encouragement to pray without ceasing. So it can not be so daunting or intimidating when it's like, oh, I need to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and with my prayer shawl and pray. Like being in a place where you're moving at the pace of heaven not at the pace of others. So that would be my word of encouragement and advice to those that want to grow in their faith journey. Number eight is how do you openly share your faith? Um, I love to talk about Jesus. I love to talk about my faith journey. I would say that I do this in a couple different ways. First, I'm prayerful about it. The idea that I am intentionally praying about the opportunity to share my faith with someone every day, to share my faith with someone. And then when that opportunity comes, <laughs> do it scared. I might be nervous. Um, I might not have all the right words, but I'm going to do it anyway. And the third part is be a human, right? You don't need to pull up, pull out your KGV Bible and quote, you know, John 316 to people, but being able to just share and ask questions about where people are in their space has allowed me to open dialogue for um, my faith journey with people that are even of different faiths, um, whether they be Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, um, whether they be much older than me, whether they be a five-year-old. Like, I love to share my faith with everyone, but those three areas has allowed me to do it more consistently. Being prayerful, um, doing it scared, and just being myself. Number nine, what are some things that you love to do as a Christian? I think that this is an amazing question because a lot of people, when I first gave my heart to the Lord, it's like, oh my God, you're not gonna smoke no more. You're not gonna drink anymore. You're not gonna have fun. And understanding that when I've come to Christ or when you're walking in Christ, you have a, first you have a different definition of fun, first and foremost, but then, Christians are not boring. Those that are boring, I don't know, stay away from them. But, <laughs> but some things that I love to do as a Christian, I love to hang out with my friends. I love to have like uh, authentic worship experiences in my house or in the park. I love to go to concerts. I love to read. I love to travel. Um, I love to meet new people. Every, every space that I'm in, I'm a Christian. So whether that be at work or at the supermarket, I'm a Christian. So it's not as if I relegate myself to only these types of things, but in every space, um, my faith is there with me. So number 10 is what do you believe is God's purpose for your life? That might be a deep question for a lot of people. Um, when I consider God's purpose for my life, I would say that it's still unfolding in my understanding. And it's taken me years to be able to even understand the little bit that I know. But I believe God has uniquely gifted me to be a space or vessel of healing for others in their emotional and their mental health. Um, I believe that God um, has given me experiences that has prepared me for that and also has given me a passion to see people whole and healed in their emotional and mental health. So that's what I believe God's purpose is for me, um, that he would expand and open doors for me be, to be able to actually change and transform the mental health field altogether. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, this has been so fun. As you guys can tell, I've probably been laughing the whole entire time. I love to share my faith and I hope that this has been fun for you and a blessing for you and an encouragement that if I can do it, you can do it too. I want to tag my sis on YouTube, Princess Rennie. It's your turn. I want to see you do Christian Girl Tag Q&A and be able to share your faith with the people. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other talks on relational intelligence, emotional wellness, and spiritual maturity. And go forth and shine your light. See you later!